you expect terrorists to terror? You know, that's what they do. They terrorize. That's their bread and butter. I don't expect Americans to, to back it. No, I don't expect America, even the, even the most outlandish. You know, you want to go out there and say American, Americans are racist, Americans are sexist, Americans are transphobic. Great, we're used to that rhetoric. But to go out there and say Americans, like as Americans, we're going to support terror. We're going to back Hamas in the wake of its murder of families and children and innocents and seniors. That piece of it, I truly, I almost don't get, Emily. You know, I, I don't get when we see our own citizens out there saying this crap. It's sort of mind boggling. And I, I saw your, your back and forth on Twitter that I thought was excellent over the weekend <laughs> and was, was thinking, um, you know, on the one hand, it is true that people have a really hard time sorting fact from fiction now. It is true that people have been lied to, especially by the foreign policy establishment, uh, to disastrous consequences. Uh, that, that has happened, it is a pattern, and it is something that has, has absolutely seeped into the American sort of political imagination. All of those things are true. On the other hand, uh, especially when we're talking about college students, especially when we're talking about students at the so-called elite universities, they are adults, they are seeing Hamas's live stream of these attacks, and they have adult brains that can be used to make up what is a black and white right and wrong issue. That doesn't mean that there isn't historical context. It doesn't mean any of that. It means that this was clear. It was clear as day. It was black and white. And it's almost insulting to Hamas to say that they are not doing these things because they want the world to know that they're doing these things. It is their branding. Terrorism is their branding. And they're now telling people not to leave Gaza. Uh, that is, they're on the record saying that over and over again. So it, it is black and white. Uh, and, and I think as adults, if you can't make up your mind up, uh, if you can't make your mind up, even in the, the sort of glut and the, the muddied waters of social media, if you can't make your mind up right now, <laughs> I don't know that you do have uh, business joining the adult world in any of these leadership positions that we so often see Harvard kids graduate into. Well, that's the thing, you know, Eliana, is that you, yes, when you are, you know, 17 years old, you don't have your fully formed views on the world. But, you know, when you are, let's say, young 20s and you're out there at these college campuses or 1920, you know murder is wrong. You've learned by by then it's not okay to kill babies, little civilians who are asleep in their beds. That's, that's bad. We, most humans have learned that by the time they go off to college. Doesn't seem like it should be such a high bar to require them to consider that knowledge before they sign these letters, before they go out to college campuses. And this is the way it came up over the weekend. Vivek Ramaswamy tweeted out um, the following, the Harvard student groups who co-signed the anti-Israel letter, and, and I mean, it blamed this entire thing on Israel. No quarter for the Israelis. It was 100% pro-Hamas. The Harvard students who signed that are simple fools, but it's not productive for companies to blacklist kids for being members of student groups that make dumb political statements on campus. Colleges are spaces for students to experiment with ideas. And sometimes kids join clubs that endorse boneheadedly wrong ideas. And he says he's against cancel culture and it's bad no matter who practices it. Okay. I weighed in saying, this is your view as a presidential candidate when we're talking about, these are not kids who are like, I was a little liberal when I, I was pro Greenpeace when I was in college. You know, I was pro-choice and then I became pro-life later. These are young people who are out there demonstrating, writing letters as the murdering is going on of children, attacking the children, attacking Israel, siding with terrorists, Eliana. And it, as far as I'm concerned, I, I don't want anything to do with any of them. I am 100% pro blacklist. It is not cancel culture. I don't associate with terrorists. I don't hire their sympathizers and I don't recommend you do it either. First, Megan, I'm gonna ask your audience to excuse my voice. Um, I'm a oh. little bit hoarse, but um, 
You know, I think this is a really healthy debate for the country to have, and I'm glad we're having it, though I'm sorry it's under these circumstances. Um, this is not, uh, I think blacklist is the wrong term for it. Um, student groups sign these statements, and this the we saw the hedge fund uh, CEO, Bill Ackman, say, I want to know the members of these groups because um, I want to make sure not to hire the members of these groups to my uh, hedge fund, Pershing Square Capital. Now, Vivek Ramaswamy, on the other hand, if he thinks these are kids who entertain silly ideas, he's free to hire them. Um, there is no blanket blacklist. Uh, exactly. Each private company is free to do what it so chooses. And I think it is a lesson to the kids who are members of these groups that um, these are serious ideas. These are serious world events. They should think long and hard before they sign their names to statements. Um, that shouldn't be too hard for the careerist kids at the Harvards and Yales and Princetons and Stanford to understand. Um, they understand that quite well, but employers are watching. And by the way, there are plenty of law school student groups and med school student groups that sign these statements. It is not just 18 year old undergraduate kids. There are plenty of 25 and 30 year olds um, who sign these statements, but um, every employer is gonna make up his own mind, whether he wants a signatory of one of these statements at his company. Plenty of them will decide they do, um, but those who don't, they are perfectly free to say, we don't want um, we don't want somebody who blamed the victim of a terror attack uh, for that attack uh, to work at our company. And we're seeing, uh, we saw Ken Griffin of Citadel, uh, who gave $300 million to Harvard, tell the New York Times this morning, um, absolutely not. None of the kids who signed these statements will work at Citadel. And he said, 100 years ago, these people would have been considered adults. Today, they're considered babies. But 100 years ago, uh, no. And this is beyond the pale. And you know what? He's got a lot of other options for, for of people who want to work at Citadel besides um, the 30 kids, the, the members of these 30 groups um, who signed the statement at Harvard. You know what? As you're as you were making even better points, your voice got like even more raspy and it was working for me. I don't, You're crossing <laughs> over to like, Little Robert F. Kennedy situation. <laughs> what a trooper you are for coming on, notwithstanding your your challenge today. We're with you. Happy to be here. Um, but yes, this is exactly how I feel. If you want to hire these terrorist sympathizers, go for it. Good luck. I won't be patronizing your business. But they're not going to come to work for the Megyn Kelly show. And I'm sure they don't want to, trust me. But there are large corporations where they wouldn't be outing themselves as one of these student groups. If you signed this letter or you were part of the, one of these groups and you didn't support this stuff, all right, I'm, I'm open-minded to hearing like how you didn't realize that the lunatic who ran your group was gonna launch this letter in the middle of a terrorist. I'm, low, I'm open, great, tell me that you disavow. I'm, I'm listening. But for those students who are part of the groups that signed these letters, blaming Israel and only Israel and cheering on Hamas, they can pound sand. I never want I, I never want them anywhere near a company that I'm associated with that my children would ever go work for. And I applaud these business leaders for saying no. So here's what happened over the weekend. Um, then, so I challenged Vivek and whatever, Vivek can defend himself. I, it was my pushback on his tweet that got things started. Then Candace Owens felt the need to weigh in on Vivek's side suggesting it's all well and good. These kids can be rehabilitated. You know, they can, I would take like, you know, I've taken on people who have changed their views and it's disingenuous to suggest that they can't be changed. And you know, I think it's wonderful that she's willing to take them on. I really do. I look forward to the Candace Owens internship program over the Daily Wire. And I have found a bunch of students who she could take on because she really thinks that they're open-minded to a change of heart. And here's just a few samples for her to call from. Here, watch. My name is Arzla Mohammed. This is a Nazi fucking IDF Israeli bitch. You guys are fucking Nazis. You're the one you killing Jews. genocide. You support genocide. You're the one beheading babies. Nobody is killing Jews. You support genocide. You're fucking disgusting. You support You're genocide a of my Nazi people. Bitch. By the way, my name is Arzo Mohammed. Come find me, fucking Nazis. Hamas are Palestinians, okay? All of us Hamas, Cassandra. Ma'am, there were children murdered. There were babies beheaded. Oh. Babies beheaded, really. Please educate yourself. Well, please, please check the news okay. because as as a news reporter you got to check the fucking news okay. because they said that that shit was fake okay glory to the martyrs glory to the martyrs 
liberators. Do you know what you're saying when you say, we will liberate the land. There you go. We will liberate the land by any means necessary. We will liberate the land. Glory. Glory to Hamas. So there's that first nice girl, Arzo. She looks like a potential summer hire. I mean, you could put her in the... Or maybe if Vivek wins, she could go intern at the White House since he too believes these people can... They they ought to... Okay. Well, good luck with that. I, I look forward to your re-education program and I hope you succeed. What do you think of it, Emily? Well, okay. So the, the broader problem here is that we have utter sophists in our university system, especially at some of these elite colleges. You have professors, you know, Judith Butler, some 20 years ago, maybe even less than 20 years ago, was talking about how it's important to understand Hamas and Hezbollah in the context of, uh, you know, struggles against oppression and colonialism everywhere. And that is not an isolated argument. Students have been uh, being you know, sort of inundated with that kind of argumentation for decades on college campuses. But it's much worse now than it ever has been because these sophists, these people who uh, are, are horrible at actual like academia because the standards have been lowered in the names of uh, the fake sort of cause of social justice for years and years are the ones that are educating these kids. Now, that doesn't take the blame off of the kids. If you are uh, a Harvard student, honest to God, if you're an adult uh, in the United States uh, in 2023 and you look at what happened last week, loud and clear, again, Hamas live streaming some of this stuff, Hamas eagerly owning, embracing some of this stuff, and you are chanting uh, by any means necessary, they have hang gliders in a way, glory to the martyrs, which sometimes they say means civilians. Uh, but I think when you're also talking about the hang gliders and by any means necessary, we know exactly what they were talking about. I don't care what your professors are telling you. I don't care what the media is telling you. If in the hours after a targeted slaughter, that's how you are talking, uh, you have problems that will not be fixed uh, just by maturing and getting even older when you're already an adult human being. This show is supported by Grand Canyon University. Founded in 1949, GCU is a private Christian university that's dedicated to delivering an affordable and transformative higher education. Their vibrant campus is located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. And according to niche.com, it's ranked a top 25 best campus in the country. As of June, 2023, GCU offers 330 academic programs with over 270 of them online, allowing you the freedom to earn your degree on your time from wherever you are. Their programs are also designed to challenge and inspire you. At GCU, your degree, whether it's a bachelor's, master's, or doctorate, integrates the free market system and a welcoming Christian worldview. And they believe that higher education should be accessible to all. Learn more about GCU's programs, competitive tuition rates, and scholarship offers from your university counselor. They're part of the supportive graduation team that's gonna take a personalized approach to helping you achieve your academic goals, walking next to you every step of the way. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University, private, Christian, affordable. For more info or to enroll, visit gcu.edu. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.